incorporaciones negativas. Sí, cabal, sí. Bueno, pero qué bueno que lo solucionó. Ahí me trabé yo también. Uh -huh. Ahí había un poquito de dificultad. Sí, cabal. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are you? Ah, good. And you? How are you feeling? Ah, oh, very nice. Good. Yes. Very, very good. Okay. okay. We are going to start the session number two of this week number two also. Um, it is supposed that I am or I was able to solve the problems with the audio and all other things. So I don't know if you are listening or you can hear me clearly right now. Ahora se escucha muy bien, teacher. Okay, that's very good because I was like working on that problem uh, today and I hope that we don't have any problems uh, with uh, that. Pero se ha quedado congelada, teacher. Ah, oh, sí, ya se, no, se volvió a congelar, teacher. I don't know, I don't know why, but with you, I have a lot of problems with the, your, your group. Uh, when I am uh, beginning with the session, I don't know why. Uh, I don't know what is the problem, but uh, we are going to begin. So I don't know if this, it is problem of this uh, thing because I'm converting a video, a previous video of the session that I was having. So I don't know if that my computer is like, Mm, I am using it too much these days. So I think that is maybe a problem of that, that tough things, but we are going to continue. So yesterday we were talking about the uses of so to neither and either. We were seeing a conversation in which we were listening how to use that expression. And also we were um, talking about the uses that we can give to that expressions when we are talking with someone. And we have just so and to, because they are positive connotation sentences, but we are going to continue with that part. And then we are going to see either and neither that are negative connotation. So, we are going to have like uh, a review of the so and to, but in this case, we are going to have some sentences. We are going to have a speaker A and a speaker B. Remember that yesterday, but let me share the screen first. Let's see here, I need to take this out. Okay. Here we have this table in which we were talking about person A and person B. In that case, we were saying that we have that sentence in which we are going to agree because we are showing agreement with the person A. So yesterday we were seeing this sentence in which we are going to use the same structure. Tenemos la misma estructura, vamos a utilizar lo que son los auxiliares, lo vamos a llamar auxiliares, porque también tenemos el verbo to be involucrado en estas oraciones. Vamos nosotros a responder, when we are using so, vamos a responder utilizando el mismo auxiliar que tenemos en la oración del speaker A. Y le vamos a agregar el so. El so siempre tiene que ir al principio. So, in that case, so am I, so are you, so is he, so do I, so can I, and all of that things. Nosotros vamos a agregarlo siempre. El so siempre va a ir en esa respuesta. But in the case of to, we are just like using the same sentence to uh, give the answer. 
But now we are going to see, because we have long sentences here in this one. I mean, it is not like here. We have long, long sentences because we are going to make short answers with that structure. Vamos a hacer eh, respuestas un poco más cortas, que no suene como que estamos repitiendo todo lo que dice el person A. Así que vamos a ver esta parte con a short answer. But the first thing is that we are going to have like seven, like seven sentences. Yes, seven sentences in which we are going to answer with so, we are going to begin with that part. I'm going to have like a table. And I'm going to write a speaker's A statement. And then we are going to see what is the speaker B answer. So I'm going to have eight of these. And we have a speaker's A. I mean, speaker. Speaker A and a speaker B. Okay, in the first uh, sentence, we are going to see this one. And it says, Celine is watching TV. Celine is watching TV. That is the sentence. That is the thing that the speaker A is saying in that case. Celine is watching TV. So in this case, we have this one. We are going to mark the verb or the auxiliary that we are using. And in this case, we are using the verb to be. ¿Cómo sabemos que tenemos que eh, completar las oraciones con el mismo verbo o con el mismo auxiliar? Quiere decir que mi respuesta va a llevar el verbo to be. So, let's see. What is the answer for a speaker B? And in this case, I am... Um, I can say that in that case, my answer is related to me. Mi respuesta me tiene a mí como protagonista. I am not going to use another person. I am going to use myself. What is the answer that I can give? In this case, you know that we are going to write so. So, then I'm going to write what? Mm. So, so am I. So am I. So am I. Good. In that case, I am the protagonist of the answer. So am I. Celina está viendo televisión. Yo también. That is the answer. Next sentence. Some can speak French. Some can. And this one is not verb to be. Some can speak. French. Again, I am the protagonist of the uh, answer. So, and what is the auxiliary that I am using he, in the first? He, so, uh, can, 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 he. Can, in that case, can we can say, so can he, or we can say, so can I. In that case, it is like this. We can use another subject or we can use um, ourselves, but that's okay. Then we have another one. Terry has completed his master's degree. Terry has completed his master's degree. Ha completado su maestría, in that case. Si queremos agregar a otra persona que no seamos nosotros, ¿cómo podemos responder? Remember that we are using has. 
um, he. So, 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 so does has uh -huh. Uh -huh. so has and we can so add a name. Y el nombre. Uh -huh. Terry. 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 Another name. So has do. Uh -huh. Mm, so no. Has. So, has he. Un nombre de, de, de hombre, in this case. Mm, um, <laughs> who? <laughs> he? No. Uh, sí. mm, so has Pablo, for example. Ah, oh, okay. So has oh, other other name? I know is the name Terry. Yes, but in that case, because Terry is the person A, you need to oh. change for another name because you are uh, talking about another person. In that case, you are not going to use the same from the person A. You need to have another one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. En este caso, como somos dos personas las que hablamos, la persona, por ejemplo, eh, Fátima está conversando con Santiago. Fátima mm -hmm. es la persona A y Santiago es la persona B. So, mm -hmm. Fátima le está diciendo a Santiago que ya completó. Y en ese momento luego recuerda que tiene un amigo que se llama Pablo que también ya completó su master's degree. En ese caso, le está respondiendo a lo que Fátima le está diciendo. And in that case is, so has Pablo. In that case, Pablo también ya lo hizo, ya lo completó. Por eso, en ese caso, no podemos utilizar al mismo personaje para speaker A y speaker B. Siempre van a ser dos diferentes. Then, we have another one. His parents, he is de él. His parents should be more responsible. He is, is our subject. No tenemos el nombre de esta persona, pero sabemos que es él. So, in this case, he is, parents, should, in this case, should, is, is the auxiliary, should be more responsible. Sus padres deberían de ser más responsables. Sus padres, ¿de quién? We don't know, we can have a name, but in this case, we don't know who this person is. So, in that case, if we want to say that we need to be more responsible too, how can we create that uh, answer? Si nosotros queremos decir que nosotros también debemos ser más responsables, ¿cómo vamos a responder? Si nos ponemos a todos juntos. So we... In the middle, you need to add something. We also. Mm, what is show, the auxiliary? Show, show, show. Uh, so should we. Mm -hmm. So should we. Nosotros show. también deberíamos ser más responsables in that sentence. Acuérdense, siempre tienen que agregar esto en lo segundo. Primero es el so. Luego, el auxiliar que estamos utilizando para la oración. Y luego agregamos lo que es el subject. El subject es al final. Ya sea un pronombre o un nombre de persona. Then, Stephanie was so worried yesterday. Stephanie was. This is the one that we are going to use for the answer. Was, was so worried. I mean, this one I don't need in yellow. Was so worried yesterday. Hmm. Stephanie estuvo muy asustada, muy preocupada ayer. And I am the protagonist of this answer. Yo voy a ser el protagonista. ¿Cómo lo voy a decir? So was I. Good. So was I. So was I. Amazing. Muy bien, excelente. So was I. Then, Mary and Sam. 
Mary and Sam. And we are going to use will. Esto es para la respuesta. Will. Mary and Sam will. Okay. Will join. Will join the chess club. Mary and Sam will join the chess club. Mary and Sam se van a unir ¿da? al club de ajedrez. So, in this case, I need a girl for the answer. A name of a girl. But what is the answer? So will Fatima. Ah, good. So will Fatima. So will Santi. <laughs> you can use it too, but you are taking these answers. Muy bien. So we'll so will Aleli. Good. <laughs> yes, we can use the names of the partners. Good. And the last one. Uh, let's see. Miguel looks so confident. Miguel looks. So confident. In this case, we don't have an auxiliary, but what auxiliary can I use for this one? Because in this case, I just have the, uh, the verb. Solo tengo el verbo. ¿Qué necesito yo hacer para obtener esa respuesta? Let's see for this one. Here in the number three. I need more money. What is the answer? What is the auxiliary that I need to use? Do. Do. Mm -hmm. Good. In that case, mm -hmm. you have just the verb. Cuando solo tiene verbo en la oración, vamos a utilizar el auxiliar do, does, and did when it's in past. So, I am the, uh, the protagonist of the answer. ¿Cómo voy a dejar yo esa respuesta? So, do I. So, so do I. Good. Good. Very, very good. Okay. It is done. I guess. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Ahí ya tenemos cómo vamos a hacer nuestras respuestas. Ya sabemos que vamos a ir siguiendo la misma línea de la estructura de la frase que nos está diciendo la persona A. Vamos a identificar los auxiliares, los verbos y cosas así para responder. En nuestra respuesta no siempre vamos a ser nosotros los protagonistas. Podemos incluir a otras personas o incluso we, they, and all of those things. Now, for two, for the using of two, yesterday we were having long answers. Teníamos respuestas largas. We were repeating the sentence that the speaker A was saying and adding to at the end. Now we are going to have just short answers because in some cases it is not like we want to repeat the whole sentence that the speaker A is saying because the speaker will say, why is this person repeating everything that I am saying? In this case, we are going to uh, create short answers. So we are going to have a table, again, because it is easier to uh, have this information. So we are going to have a table with the speakers A and the speakers B. And for this one, we have two, four, six, and seven also. And I need A. So a speaker A, And a speaker B. So let's see. This is for short answers. We are going to have the same sentence as in the first table. Vamos a tener las mismas oraciones. In the first one, Celine is watching TV. Celine. 
Si tuviéramos la misma respuesta que ayer, diríamos, eh, I am watching TV too. But in this case, we are going to say, I am too. Very, very short. No le vamos a agregar detalles. Vamos directo. I am too. Yo también. No vamos a decir, yo estoy viendo televisión también. I am too. Le vamos a quitar los detalles extras. Eso es lo que vamos a hacer con estas respuestas. Sam can speak. Sam can speak French. And for this, I, we are going to use the auxiliary. Can too. Huh? Too. I can too. Yo también puedo. Then. We have for Terry, we have the name Pablo. For Terry, we have Pablo. Terry has completed his master's degree. Terry has completed his master's degree. I mean, degree. So for the answer, remember that you have Pablo. Change Terry. He, he has to. I have to. Yes, he, but in this case, that he is Pablo. Pablo has, to, has, has to. to. Good. Pablo oh. has to. ¿Qué hizo Pablo? Pues completó también el master's degree. Porque de eso se está hablando. Ya estamos hablando, ya tenemos el contexto de la oración. Así que no es necesario que lo repitamos todo porque ya sabemos de qué estamos hablando. No es like we are talking for hours and at the beginning I was saying that um, I am eating pizza and at the end of the conversation I am going to say I am too because it is not like, it is not going to have any sense. It's immediately that we are referring to the same thing. Then we have the other one. His parents should be more responsible. His parents should be more responsible. Remember that in this one, we have we. We. So in this case, we are going to begin with. We shall uh, to. Mm -hmm. We shall too. too. We shall too. Good. We have three more. Stephanie was. Was. Stephanie was so worried yesterday. Stephanie was so worried yesterday. And for that one, I have myself for the answer. So how can I say? I was I two. Was I two. was two. Good, I, I was, was two. two. Good. Then we have the other one. In this case, we have the next one. Mary and Sam will join the chess club. And for the answer, we have Fatima. Fatima is the subject of the answer. Mary and Sam will join the chess club. I mean, club. So I'm going to write. Fatima will Fat too. Fat Fatima will join too. Will too. In this case, will very short. And for the last one that we have in the other is Miguel looks so confident. So in the answer is me, the uh, responsible to answer. So Miguel looks so confident. Looks so confident. Remember that we are using an specific auxiliary. 
looks. Do. I do too. I, I look too. I look too. I, look too. Too. I, I do too. I do too. All right. Good. I do too. Porque ese es el auxiliar que estamos utilizando en lugar de looks. Ahí están. Son respuestas. Es, we can say that it's almost the same with the long answer, but these ones are more convenient because they are short. Son más cortas, representan lo mismo que la oración larga, solo que aquí no agregamos detalles extras. Como decir, I look so confident too. Yo me veo bastante empoderada, segura de mí misma también. No, en este caso, yo también lo hago. Yo también. And in that case, our short answer. We have long answers and we have short answers. You can use whatever you want. If you feel good with the long sentence, you can use your long sentence. But if you feel like it is better for you to use the short answers, you can use it. Así que no hay ningún problema con usar las oraciones largas o las oraciones cortas. Es a conveniencia. Pero ya tenemos dos opciones para responder. Now, we are going to change from positive statements to negative. Vamos a cambiar a los negativos. Porque ya hablamos positivos, cómo responder en all of the things. So, we are going to use using neither nor. Neither nor. They are like a combination. Neither or nor, we can use neither or nor, and we have the um, structure or the answer. Remember that we are using the answers. Neither nor plus, plus the auxiliary or the model verb. Plus the pronoun. Para nuestra respuesta vamos a utilizar or neither o nor más el auxiliar o un modal verb y el pronombre. Siempre el pronombre va a ir al final. Vamos a utilizar neither al principio y el auxiliar o el modal en medio. And we are going to see the examples. And we are going to have a table again because it's easier to identify the sentence and the answers. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven again. And I need eight spaces. So again, speaker A. And speaker B. For the first one we have Derek isn't sleeping. Derek no está durmiendo. In this case, we have the ing form of the verb. Derek isn't sleeping. And for the answers, we can say neither or nor. That has the same uh, function. And here we have this one. That is the verb to be or the auxiliary that we are using. I mean, uh, gray, it is not a good color for this. Tenemos el verbo to be. Así que aquí lo que vamos a hacer es agregar el verbo to be. Am um, I. Oh my God. Neither. Am I? Derek no está durmiendo. Tampoco yo. Es una... Uh, we are not going to say that it's like something bad. The, the, the sentence is not something bad. But it has a negative connotation because we are using not in that case. And it's not like something that is not going to, to happen. But in that case, Derek isn't sleeping. Neither. Am I? Yo tampoco estoy durmiendo. Estoy diciendo que yo comparto la, eh, la misma situación. No estamos durmiendo. Why? 
because we are on a party, because we are working, because, tell me, Aleli. O sea, que neither la traducción sería uh, tampoco. Se utilizan para decir tampoco y también, pero más que todo para las connotaciones. En el y solo para la... negar. Ah, en este caso, solo para negar. Neither and either solo son para negativo. Okay. So, y tú solo para positivo. Afirmativo. Ok. Ajá. No vamos okay. a utilizar neither and either para positivo. Tiene que ser una oración con connotación negativa. Y el so y el tú tiene que ser una connotación positiva. No lo vamos a cambiar, no lo vamos a poner en otro lugar. Esto solo mm. para negativos, aquello solo para positivos. Ok, thank you. You're welcome. Then we have the second one. Sandra cannot play the guitar. Cannot. That is negative. Sandra cannot play the guitar. Ella, Sandra, no puede tocar la guitarra. Y volvemos. Neither. And we are going to use, in this case, can, because it's the auxiliary. Neither can I. Ahora, para la respuesta, no necesitan ponerle el not, porque ya el neither me está diciendo que es una respuesta que tiene una connotación negativa. No voy a poner neither can not I, porque no hay sentido. En ese caso, el neither ya me da la pauta para saber que es una respuesta negativa, así que no es necesario ponerle el not. Then, number three. Jennifer hasn't eaten her sandwich. Jennifer hasn't eaten her sandwich. Jennifer no se comió su sandwich. And we are going to see Neither has, and we can use another person. Mm, we are going to say James. Then we have, they shouldn't complain. They shouldn't complain. Oh my God, it's raining so hard. Complain. And in this case, should is the auxiliary. Neither should we. Neither should we. And we have again, Stephanie was not worried at all. Was not worried at all. No estaba nerviosa, no estaba asustada para nada. No estuvo asustada. And we are going to say neither was, and we can use another expression to um, talk about a person. And in this case, we are going to use her husband. Vamos a utilizar su esposo. Porque también podemos utilizar ese tipo de relaciones para especificar en nuestras respuestas. Neither was, I mean, neither was her husband. Tampoco su esposo estaba preocupado. That is the answer. Then, Mary and Sam won't attend the meeting. Mary and Sam won't attend the meeting. No van a ir a la reunión. And in this case, because we are using want, that is the negative of will, in our answer, we are going to use will, not want, because that is negative using el not. Neither will I. 
And in the last one, dogs cannot fly. That's really funny. Dogs cannot fly. Los perros no pueden volar. And we have the answer. Neither can cats. Neither can cats. Los gatos tampoco. Also, there is a negative statement. We use a positive auxiliary form. Cuando tenemos una eh, oración negativa, una connotación negativa en el, en el speaker A, o sea, en la oración del speaker A, nuestra respuesta va a cambiar inmediatamente a la connotación. Bueno, el auxiliar va a cambiar inmediatamente a ser positivo. Porque como les decía, el neither ya me está mostrando a mí que yo estoy hablando de una oración negativa. Así que no es necesario volverlo a poner. It's like when we are using the auxiliaries uh, to represent something. Uh, when we have the auxiliary, we are not going to change the verb when we are using the third form because the auxiliary is telling me that uh, they have that function. Esa función ya le queda al neither. Es igual que el auxiliar, cuando yo tengo un auxiliar, por ejemplo, voy a utilizar el das para referirme a la tercera persona del singular, ya no voy a cambiar yo el verbo principal que tengo porque el auxiliar ya tiene esa función. Es lo mismo con esto, el neither ya tiene la función negativa y mi auxiliar va a pasar a ser positivo, pero la connotación de la oración siempre va a ser negativa. Now, we are going to see the use of either. We have here, neither. And we have either. The difference between neither and either is the position. Is like when so and to. So it's at the beginning, to is at the end. Neither is at the beginning, either is at the end. Lo mismo pasa. And so, yo lo pongo al inicio de mi respuesta. Luego pongo el auxiliar y luego pongo el sujeto. Con el to, yo lo pongo al final. Mi sujeto va primero, mi auxiliar va después y luego va el to. Lo mismo pasa con el neither y el either. Neither al principio, then the auxiliary, then the subject. El either va a ir al final. Primero mi subject, my auxiliary, And ma, then we are going to write either. Pero en este caso, otra cosa diferente con el either. Si bien es cierto que representa algo negativo, aquí sí tenemos que poner los negativos. Por ejemplo, en the first one, I'm not. I'm not either. I am not either. Aquí sí vamos a utilizarlos todos. Le vamos a poner siempre el not. But we are going to see the example. And remember that you have this information on the document, so don't worry. We are going to see A again. A speaker is A. And a speaker B. Esto es solo como un complemento de nuestra respuesta. Así que siempre tenemos que notificar que es negativo. So, Derek isn't sleeping. Derek isn't sleeping and we are going to have our uh, answer, but first we need to see how to construct the answer. We need to have the pronoun, that is the first thing, or the subject. Then we are going to have the auxiliary, or the model verb. Then we are going to have either. So first is the subject. And in that case, my answer is I. I am not either. either. Mm -hmm. right. I am not either. Yo tampoco estoy durmiendo. Then, Sandra cannot play the guitar.
and I am going to have I cannot either. Es como estar diciendo yo tampoco y utilizar el to. Pero como en este caso no podemos utilizar el to, usamos el either porque ya es una oración negativa. It's almost the same, but with a different connotation. Jennifer has sent. I mean, double N. Jennifer doesn't. I mean, hasn't. Jennifer hasn't eaten her sandwich. And my answer is James hasn't. James hasn't either. Then we have, they shouldn't complain. They shouldn't. They shouldn't complain. We shouldn't either. We shouldn't either. Stephanie was not worried at all. Wasn't worried at all. Her husband wasn't either. Wasn't either. Mary and Sam won't attend the meeting. In, in this case, we are going to use won't again because we are going to use it in negative. Or you can use will not, that is the, the other form. I will not, or we can use one either. Aquí podemos usar cualquiera que nosotros nos parezca mejor. Podemos utilizar el will not or el won't. That is the same thing. And dogs can fly. Can not fly. And here we can say cats can't either. And that is the construction for the answers. Uh, at the end, there are very, very, we can say that they are not really complicated to understand because you know that you need to have three things, three specific things. In this case, you are going to have the subject, the auxiliary, and the either. And in the, um, the positive, you are going to have so, plus the auxiliary, plus the subject. Siempre van a tener las tres mismas cosas, solo que lo que cambia es el orden. Siempre necesitamos el, el so, el to, el either y el neither. También necesitamos el auxiliar. Y necesitamos el sujeto, el subject, para responder. Si tenemos esas tres cosas, ya tenemos nuestra respuesta. Solo tenemos que saber dónde ponerlas. El so y el neither van al principio. Luego va el auxiliar y luego va el sujeto. Luego llevamos el sujeto, el auxiliar y el, el to y el either al final. Así que el, el so y el neither al principio, to and either al final de la respuesta. Y ahí tenemos nuestras oraciones. In informal interactions, because you know that we have in English two different ways to speak, the formal and the informal one. 
And in informal interactions when speaking or in less formal writings, regardless of tense, we can use me too and me neither in first person. Cuando hablamos de manera más informal con los amigos, eh, podemos decir me too, yo también. Y es bastante utilizado, ya lo hemos escuchado mucho, ya lo hemos visto mucho. Uh, and we have some examples that are like acceptable in that way because it is not like very, very formal. And we have, I have been studying a lot recently. That is the sentence. I have been studying a lot recently. And we can answer, me too. Yo también, porque estamos hablando entre amigos, algo bastante informal. Or another example. He never attend the class regularly. He never attend the class regularly. And we can say, me neither. Yo tampoco, no voy regularmente a clases. And I haven't been feeling very well. I haven't been feeling very well. No me estoy sintiendo bien. Me neither. Yo tampoco. And son aceptables. Se pueden aceptar cuando es algo informal. So, we are going to see. I'm going to write a couple of sentences. And you are going to find the correct word that we can use. Either, neither, to, or so. Vamos a ver cuál es la correcta. Voy a escribir las oraciones dejando el espacio para la respuesta. Y les voy a dar tiempo que la leen, la analicen. Y luego vamos a ir diciendo cuál es la respuesta correcta. So, we are going to begin with the number one. Exercise. We have the number one and it says, I really I really miss Kate. That is person A. We are going to be person B as always. And we have the space, do I. Number two. I was so tired after the game. I was so tired after the game. Was I. Number three. I haven't tried Chinese food before. I haven't tried Chinese Number four, we reunite with my high school friends once a year. They are 10 of this sentence, so we are in the number six. We are almost done with the sentences. I have number anything like this. 
oh, wow, I need to change it for the page because uh, we are not going to have it completed. So give me a second like this. I need the whole page. Yes, like this. We're going to have just A because of the space and because of the time also. I couldn't. Go to the director. So, a sentence, read them, and then you are going to tell me what is the word that it is missing. So, we have like two minutes to read the sentence and analyze the situation, and then we are going to give the answer. So, the time begins now.
to see the answers. First, I really miss K. What is the answer for that? So, so do I. Good, because it is at the beginning. Es al principio y es positiva. So do I. Yes. Then, number two. I was so tired after the game. What is the answer? So was I. So was I. So was I. Otra vez, al principio, positiva. Muy bien. Número yes. tres. I haven't fried Chinese food before. I haven't... Neither. Either. 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 Acuérdense, el either va al final y lleva el negativo. Number four. Oh, wow. We reunite with my high school. Neither. Ah, we do? D neither. We do too. Why? We do oh, too. We do too. We do. No es negativa, no es neither, es positiva, es two. We do too. Number five, I don't want to lose my job. Hmm? Neither, neither, do neither do I. I. Neither do neither I. Do I. Yeah, neither do I. Vamos a ver en esta. I have never witnesses anything like this before. I have never. Neither have my sister. Neither have my sister. Neither. Porque el never me dice a mí que es negativa. A pesar que yo no llevo el not. Good. But in this case, we are going to change the answer for a has. Then, number seven, my cousin went to the movie theater yesterday. So, so did my uncle. So, so did my uncle. Good, my uncle. amazing. So did yes. my uncle. And the last one. I call. My oh. colleague couldn't. Either. Either. Good. Either. Muy bien. Excelente. So, this is the end of this session. Very, very good job. Hicieron un muy buen trabajo con las respuestas. Nos vamos a ver el día de mañana. So, have a really good night and see you tomorrow. Thank you so much. Number. See you tomorrow. Good night. Okay. See you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Good night. Good night.